Alhamdulillah, with these questions and all these platforms, uh, we're now on different social media platforms with thousands of people logging in live and now being exposed to tariqah teachings, to the khatams, the zikrs and the ways of Nashbandiyatul Aliyah. So alhamdulillah for that reality and the system in which many of these people have learned is not from tariqah. So it's best that these people come and learn the system of tariqah and that's from Surat Al-Kahf where Allah directs the servant towards the mannerisms for people whom are teaching a heavenly knowledge and don't come with your head but come with your heart. And the uloom in which they teach and the knowledges in which they teach, they teach a, a heart wisdom, ilma laduni wa hikmati bi salihin that when Allah wants to bless a servant, He grants them Divinely knowledges, ilma laduni wa hikmati bi salihin These are two wings that to be given just the wisdom but not the hikmah to use it can be very dangerous. That's when somebody just knows a bunch of realities that they read from their shaykh and they just give it to randomly and, and uh, frighten people. It has to have a hikmah and a wisdom on how to be used, how to be disseminated and to teach the servants of Allah how their system is performing. In this ever complicated world, Islam and the perfection and the way of Sayyidina Muhammad comes to teach a wisdom and the shaykhs use a wisdom to deduce a logic in their understanding and they want the student to understand that same way. It's through wisdom, connection, purity and sincerity your sharia will be based on your deduction and your ability to deduce an understanding. Very simple, very simple. So if something, we'll give an example, in Islamic law killing someone is illegal, this is the foundation. Now did Prophet have to come and list every conceivable way to kill someone? As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's impossible to think of every potential way that if you kill like this, it's like this. If you kill like this, would be illegal. You kill like this, would be illegal. It's just common sense with deduction that the death of someone else and the taking of someone's life is forbidden. So then with a clean heart and wisdom you can deduce that as soon as cigarettes were labeled that second hand smoke kills, they entered into haram. You don't have to give a fatwa. Huh? They did that already for you. When the product is written that secondhand smoke kills, it became haram. Now if these guys on the internet, because they're more like Bani Israel instead of the Ummat al-Muhammad that and that's a different way of fiqr, different way of understanding. The, what caused Bani Israel difficulties with Allah until today their scholars are trained to find an error and they're rewarded in their ability to find an error. So they give them some religious and 
jurisprudence and then their scholastic ability is to find a loophole. That where do you find a loophole? That's why they're all good lawyers. Then they find something. And so Allah described, don't fish on Shabbat. They don't fish on, on, on the Shabbat, Friday night. They say, okay, how about if we throw the net just in the water, we won't be fishing. Whatever came is for us. <laughs> so Saturday they went and collected the, the fish. So we technically, we did not fish on Shabbat. We threw the net, Allah sent the fish, Saturday we ate them. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You don't try to find a loophole in everything. So that same, if you try to apply it to the way of Sayyidina Muhammad and these are Salafi jurisprudence, these are the Bab al the gate where everybody can make a, a ruling, they come back with all these types of fitness. Uh, where was this mentioned? Uh, where was this mentioned? These don't have to be mentioned. Every single possible drug doesn't have to be mentioned for you to know which one is haram. It's the state in which it takes you. If you're inebriated in inability to be conscious, you've entered in to what Prophet described, you lost consciousness. Now whether it's a bath salt and somebody invented this as a pharmacist or as a, a chemist you don't need the name of it and say, well, it wasn't specifically named by Prophet so therefore I can use it, which they're doing now with uh, hashish and different drugs, they say it's natural. Everything is natural, heroin is natural but these are all forbidden. But because they want to enter into these fitnas and that's what destroyed other nations. But the nation of Islam is not like that, the way of Sayyidina Muhammad is not like that. That Allah inspire within their hearts a wisdom. If the taking of life is forbidden, you can't do anything that would harm someone else's life. If you want to smoke and harm yourself but the smoke goes down and harms the next person and gives them a possibility of losing their life, of course it's forbidden by Allah You don't need complicated fatwas and all sorts of ulama to argue. Because ilma laduni wa hikmati bas salihin, that's why they have shaykhs and their awliya, the hearts are inspired. And for them that's it, they understand it in their heart. So these types of things when we interact with these people, they want every word, like where was this word? And that's, that's not how the system works. But even that word is quwwah, means it's power and help and power is throughout Qur'an. La hawla wa la quwwa, there's no help and there is no power except through Allah From that one ayat al kareem you can read, write millions of books that there is no help reaching to you and there's no power except in Allah via how Allah wants to send it. So yeah, energy is mentioned. Energy and help is all mentioned by Allah So the tariqah's uloom and the tariqah way of knowledge is something completely different for people and they're not used to it. They're not used to a system in which has a wisdom. So that's, that's the difference and that's inshaAllah will be dispersed when people come to a way of, of humility and to come to the ways of tariqah so that their heart can have its own judge. So when you practice, you do your zikr, you do all your things, then the wisdom within your heart begins to give you your coordinates. You begin to understand what's right, what's wrong, what's allowed, what's not allowed. And that's the, the beauty of Islamic law and its wisdom, that it always has an immense wisdom in it and you can deduce it from sincerity. And all sincerity will answer all Islamic questions inshaAllah. What we got from our people on YouTube? I know you guys are listening to the TikTok with the thousands of people we're logging on. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa uh, It feels like my devices are draining, siphoning the energy and the jallis that are entering and building in the body, especially Apple. 
Is this just one's imagination or good to limit exposure? I thought you were talking about your heart as a device. So your actual physical devices are draining through your hands? Yeah, are they, are they, well that's something from these computers and these manufacturers that they want to make something to drain out so that you rebuy the newest model, so that they know from those things. But as far as using technologies, definitely it's going to affect your energy and we're all heavily involved in technology everywhere. So we hope with the, the wudu, the taweez, the zikr, the salawats we can sort of compensate for the negativity that it brings. But no doubt that at times when I hold I feel a pain in my hand because we are the greater battery, we are the greater source of power. It's not that, the little battery that's in that device and you have what we describe 1.4 volts, 70 trillion cells, 1.4 volt in each cell, 90 trillion volts you have. So of course you're powering everything. So that's when you can feel the pain, you can feel the energy coming in and that's again a reminder, go wash, make wudu and maybe sort of push it away a little bit. But to be conscious of these energies, yes. More important is then also to make the connection, keep making the connection. In these days the, the connections become stronger and stronger to compensate for the negativity that's everywhere. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Sayyidi, could you please guide us on how should the student know that they're going too fast? Like Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam yeah. on their journey, they miss the sign and need to recalibrate and go slower. Forgive me for my lack of understanding. No, alhamdulillah. Nice manners everybody has, alhamdulillah. It's good. See all this way you, you, when you answer like this, all these people now ask questions with such nice manners. So that was, that was better than two years ago, mm. yes yeah, alhamdulillah. That's all that's necessary is the good manners and, and good adab that when we gave the example of Sayyidina Musa salam setting out to reach the realities and to reach this teacher who would teach knowledges to become rush, to become ripened. And as he set out and passed and asked for the fish, asked for lunch, how are we going to have lunch? And then somebody emailed, what does the fish have to do with anything? Why is the fish in the symbol? Which was a good question on this subject. Means that when Sayyidina Musa was setting out after his experience of asking Allah, I want to see you. Allah said, you can't see me because he's Kalimullah, he's the one speaking to Allah all the time. So he says, I want to now see maybe who am I talking with? What's you know, the, get closer. Allah said, you can't see me but if I show you the mountain and I send you to see my glory, if at that time we'll talk after. And when Sayyidina Musa went for that experience to see what Allah wanted to show him of his Subhan of his glory. They say that the light of Sayyidina Muhammad appeared and the Prophet Musa wowed. He reached a state of death from the witnessing and the tajalli in which he witnessed. As a result of rising after that event, he gave his shahada and La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah At that point realizing, I don't want what I have. I want to be under Muhammadun Rasulullah hmm? That's why I want to go where the two rivers meet. From that point I want to set a journey to where the two rivers meet. Why two rivers? This is not a tourist but the two eternal rivers of reality, La ilaha illallah and Muhammadun Rasulullah These are two rivers. These are the two immense springs. So where La ilaha illallah, he, wow, the end of Allah has he, wow is who? And it directly connects to mim. So it's La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There's no space in the kalima. So he wants to where the two rivers meet. I want where the who is because I, I am thinking I know La ilaha illallah but I don't really, that's why I want to see him. 
So Allah says, it doesn't come that way. You have to seek out Sayyidina Muhammad So I want to wear this who? And so he's set out for the who, intention to meet the who, the reality of the who men. And when he had a fish, that's why the fish was the symbol, he had a dried fish to eat. They set out said, where's the lunch? And Sayyidina Yeshua, his representative said, it was ajeeb, I forgot to tell you, shaitan made me to forget. We reached a point where I had set the fish out for lunch, it came to life. That's why the fish in the example of Sayyidina Khidr that the fish came to life, jumped into the water. So fish and whale is referenced as hoot because of the who. So it has the secret Allah is directing our attention to who and that this who man, his symbol is bringing the dead to life. So the fish are souls that swim in an ocean of mercy. And when a soul is, is so famished and in difficulty from not being in the ocean of Allah it's becoming destroyed, becoming hopeless. So the servants whom their soul, their heart feels no hope, this servant can bring the fish to life. He brings the souls to life that it jumped into the ocean. At that point Nabi Musa <coughs> knew, oh that's the sign I was looking for. So it means our life is that we're not going to ever see that if we're going so fast. If we're taking this life so fast and, and we want miracles to happen to us in a fast way, Allah is giving an example of Kalimullah whose immense station can't be understood, is telling him, you have to slow it down, go back, retrace your steps because the guide he's looking for, how did he miss him? He's not visible, he's an unseen Prophet of Allah Go back now with your tafakkur and contemplation. At that time retracing the steps, going back and then witness the persona, the persona of Sayyidina Khidr Sayyidina Abbas Khidr He's the unseen Prophet of Allah So the fish represents the souls and that be like a fish in the ocean of Allah's rahmah. And that's why they enter into the ocean and Mawlana Shaykh would describe that in this ocean of Allah don't be a rock. Don't just go in the ocean and all the way down to the bottom and do nothing but go like a fish. And he said, if you look at the fish, he looked like he's going to drink the entire ocean. I mean take Allah's rahmah, take Allah's bounty, take all of these realities and bring them into your being because Allah is generous. Don't take a little and go all the way to the bottom but try to absorb the immensity of Allah's ocean. That was why the fish is then a symbol that Sayyidina Khidr riding on top of a fish because he revives the souls and that our souls have to enter back into the ocean of Allah's rahmah. Another important understanding of the fish and the soul is that everybody's a big fish in their small pond. Right? So based on their life and where they are and what they've made of themselves, they're a big fish in a small pond. They know everything, they know how they're going to plan everything. It's not easy to enter Allah's oceans because Allah's ocean is immense, immense and you become such a small fish in an immense pond, an immense ocean and that's why people struggle with tariqahs. You know they had their life planned, they knew all the people, they know everything, they were something amongst their crowd, They're, they had it set. Everyone was a big fish in their pond but, <laughs> but what is it, it doesn't help anything, all it takes that fish throws them into an ocean in which you can't see left, you can't see right, you can't see any shore because it's vast. So people struggle with that vastness. They say, I don't know, I don't why, why I feel anything, I don't know this, I don't know that. And they feel all their coordinates are off because small pond they knew each place where it was going. 
And that's also important to feel that way because you have to feel that you're in the oceans of immense bounty and that we have no understanding which direction is where. And that's why then we submit to Allah tawakkul is submit and taslim and Allah will guide you through these immense oceans of reality. That's why the, the uloom and the knowledges are from that type of ocean that people are bewildered from this understanding so that they can enter into these oceans of reality. If they've heard it and heard it and heard it and they're not reaching a state of bewilderment that the knowledges are not continuously taking them deeper into an ocean, that's a problem. So then the knowledges and heavenly knowledges have to be pulling that fish deeper into the reality. Not just always going around the pond and, oh, okay I know where this one, I know where this tree is, I know where this bush is, I know where this thing. So that's the difference between this knowledge and the outer imams that always they all speak the same thing every day all the time 30 years. But this knowledge that they want is they're pulling you deeper down, come deep into this ocean for your realities. Where Mawlana Shaykh would describe what's in the ocean? Pearls and corals. These are the treasures of the bottom of the ocean, not the sand. Otherwise he would have said, collect shells, right? Because the ocean spit out the shell. Mawlana Shaykh would say, pearls and corals that go for the pearl. <coughs> Because you are a pearl, you have a reality. Go deep into the oceans of Allah If you can go deep enough, you can reach to your pearl. So Abu Yazid al-Bistami jumped into this ocean of Divine lights, went deep, deep, deep in his marifa until he reached a point in which he said he began to hear the dhikr of Hu, huge echoes of Hu and began with his Marifa going deeper and deeper until he reached the presence of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban Mawlana Shah Naqshaban got upset, what are you doing here? This is my domain, <laughs> this is an example. But he reached to give us an understanding, one of the realities of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban in which his uh, reality of his soul is the safeguarding of these pearls. And that his reality dresses upon them the dhikr of who. And like a pearl, this protection and your reality <coughs> is locked up in this shell. That Allah doesn't allow you to take that pearl and destroy your reality. So then you have to be tested and verified to dive. And as you dive, they'll check your coordinates again. And as you dive, they check your coordinates again. Until one day you witness the presence of Mawlana Shah Naqshaban in that ocean. And under his authority, he puts the pearl into your chest, and that becomes your trust and your amanat. That you operate your existence from the pearl that's been placed within you, that you reach a station of trust, trustworthiness. That that pearl won't ever go into the hands of shaitan. And that that pearl is, is your illumination and your reality. And that its tarbiya was under Mawlana Shah Naqshaban's direct nazar and is continuously under that nazar with dhikr hu. So these are immense, immense oceans. And this is what from Nabi Musa wanted to reach of these realities. He wanted to reach the hu. So we said, hey, it's for what? Hidayat. So who, they break down, what is a who man? One, he should have this Bahrul Hayat, uh, eternal oceans of the ever-living that he can revive the hearts of people. He can take a dead heart and bring it back to life because this is the reality emanating upon their soul. But as a result when Allah make a who man to be a who man, He grants them from the hay hidayat. So their guiding through all their senses and all the lataifs of their hearts have been opened. And they guide with all of that reality, guidance and bring people back. And then Allah dress them from wow. Means then these are ashiqeen. So there is no who man that's a mean man, angry man because that's not a who man. 
Who? Means that he has the dress of Divine Love, that Allah dressed from this ocean of wadud. They understood that Allah brought all of creation in, in a state of love and that to honour that love, respect that love and bring and nourish that way. So there are immense oceans of wadud and ishq and love for Sayyidina Muhammad, for the Divine and for all of Allah's creation. So when they look with that reality then they look with the reality of who inshaAllah. So this is our life is to enter into that ocean and to, to accompany these who men inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi did Prophet Isa salam know who Prophet wasallam was while Isa was on earth? Please forgive me if this is an inappropriate question. Inappropriate question, yes. Well, I can't speak to Sayyidina Isa since <laughs> what he knows. What I cannot, can't even speak to what I know and not know. So I can't ever dare to, to, to but definitely Sayyidina Isa salam was calling Nabi Ahmad. And my father who art in heaven, holy is his name. He wasn't talking to Allah Allah is not a father. He knew his reality, he knew his connection to Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why Rosa Sharif is the maqam of Sayyidina Isa salam. And when Allah described Sayyidina Maryam salam, and Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem has 19 letters. So those whom train with us understand this 19 it's, symbol, it's a symbol of the Ahlul Bayt of Muhammad, Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These 19 letters are the 19 letters of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Allah put Sitna Maryam in Surah 19. SubhanAllah. To say, oh, be careful. She's very powerful, very dear to Allah. Then Allah describes, we chose her above all women. So after we describe how much Allah loves Prophet Allah's all about the love for Prophet Qur'an is all about this love and this ishq, it's not about me and you. So then who's Allah addressing? That we chose Sayyidina Maryam for Sayyidina Muhammad So this is an immense, immense reality. So this is an immense connection and that's why Sayyidina Isa salam knew who Sayyidina Muhammad is, knew his relationship to Sayyidina Muhammad and at that reason he asked Allah I don't want to die in this dunya at my station. I don't want to be a Prophet, I want to be under his nation. And Allah accepted his du'a and raised him. Why? So that when he comes down He's not coming down as a Prophet of Allah he's coming as under Ummat al-Muhammad right? Because wants to be with Sayyidina Muhammad but not as a Prophet of Allah <coughs> but as his love and his ishq. So throughout Qur'an and throughout these hadiths is all alluding to the immensity of this relationship. Then when Sayyidina Isa is coming down on the days of Dajjal and the fights with Dajjal They'll all be gathered at Umayyad Masjid in Damascus when the Dajjal is entering and trying to enter in and they're all gathered with Imam Mahdi salam will be a Jummah in which Imam Mahdi salam will pray a Jummah for the final battle to kill the Dajjal. And as soon as they call the Azan for Jummah there's a minaret which they describe is where Sayyidina Isa salam will be descending upon the earth. Means on that Jummah when they start to call the Azan for Jummah, Sayyidina Isa will be, will be appearing. The angels will be carrying Sayyidina Isa back to earth and as he's ascending onto the earth and begins to join the Jama'ah. Imam Mahdi salam will stand back to allow Sayyidina Isa salam to lead the prayer. At that time Sayyidina Isa salam said, no I came to be under the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad and go behind the line to pray behind Sayyidina Mahdi salam. And also because he witnesses who the reality of Sayyidina Mahdi is at that time. So alhamdulillah all the nation is waiting for that day that they all live to say, Ya Rabbi let me be at that day, let me be praying in that Jummah and my whole life for that Jummah, my whole life.
all I have of wealth, all I have of faith, all I have of my possessions led me to see that day. And awliyaullah taught that, ask Allah that to, to be there. For Allah knows that if your life wasn't destined to that length, He'll bring you back in your soul to witness that and to be present at that moment. Why? Because at that moment is an immensely important moment. As soon as the Jummah begins and the reality of Imam Mahdi becomes dressed, the tajalli of Sayyidina Muhammad will appear. At the end of the Jummah they'll be giving Salatu Salams to Sayyidina Muhammad and as they come to kiss the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad they said that every kiss that they kiss upon the hand that all realities and the completion of their deen will be filled within their being. So that they want to witness that day, they want to witness that reality. So it's an immense, immense, immense reality. That's why all these teachings that any light can come through these physicalities. These are miraculous days that will be opening. So the niyat and the intention is for us to witness these days. Ya Rabbi give us a life in which to see these days. If I should die before that time at least my soul to witness it. And to complete our faith, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifun wa salaam ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.